two seconds, just taking a wee note here because I've been doing this podcast for five days in a row and I'm basically fucking Joe Rogan now. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vegan Grilla and Chums. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and supporting the podcast. Last night we had Sam from Ozark and he's now my best mate and tonight we've Fern Brady. Fern Brady is probably one of the best stand-up comedians in the UK right now. And before this <laughs> madness, I just noticed you've got a fucking cap in your neck. And yeah. before this madness happened, she was doing a tour all around the world and she was filming a special. So, Fern, thank you so much for coming on, pal. Thanks. I filmed the special the day before lockdown. How mad is that? It was really That's good luck. That is crazy. And did you manage to finish it and film it okay? Yeah, we filmed it okay, but it's just, obviously, like, now it seems like insane good luck. But um, uh, I remember, because we did two recordings in Glasgow and the Lauren Moore, and then after the first recording, my agent was like, oh, there was 110 no-shows in that, but we just moved the seats so that you didn't notice. Um, but then luckily the second one was full, but people were already getting scared and stuff. Um, yeah. Loads of old people came in because I think they just don't give a shit about getting the virus. So it's going to be a weird looking special if it gets released in. But... What's it called? Uh, Power and Chaos. Oh, oh, I wanted well. to change the name, but... Um, Bye. So that that was the last time I performed stand up. I'm not bothered about missing it though. Or you, well, you sort of go in and out of it. Eh? Yeah, I go in and out. Um, yeah, I'm not missing it either. In fact, you were meant to do my fucking warm up. Yeah, I was going to do it. I didn't know if I was to mention that there, but Fern asked me to to do the warm up for our show, and I was feeling fucked. I think I. I had the symptoms of the virus. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I thought, um, I was laughing there when you said about that pervert because I, I just thought long and bitterly of all the different ones that have contacted me. And when you said that, that one was so far in the past. Because yeah, I had an adult baby coming to my shows and shitting himself and stuff. Really? Mm -hmm. Um, Is your gigs no over 18 now? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I, he's, I, that's the point of an adult baby. It's like a 40 year old guy that wants to wear nappies. And he'd said, he'd tweeted, had a dream that I was at Fern Brady's gig and she sensed that my nappy needed changing. And I was like, oh, this is Darren again under another profile. <laughs> yeah. So I need to explain. Actually, there was a Virgin Media just cut out across the entire UK there. As oh. we started off this podcast, the news just broke. And I was like mid-sentence saying that I was in love with you. And then <laughs> it crashed. And I thought you just hung up the phone. <laughs> but um, obviously, Fern's got a big <laughs> following on Twitter and stuff. And a couple of years ago, she was getting trolled by this fucking fake account. And it was like a gimp or something, wasn't it? And you, you yeah. thought it was me. Um, yeah, well, it um, must have seemed really, I think he was saying similar things that you would say, so I thought it sort of it was a piss take, maybe. Um, <laughs> All right. I don't even remember who that one turned out to be. Um, yeah. But I, the adult baby was much worse. I tried telling that story at shows and it was too dark and people just sort of looked at me like with pity. Have you ever had, right, so obviously that is the tip of the iceberg, but mm -hmm. do you get creepy fans and crazy people kind of turning up at gigs or sending you presents and stuff? Yeah, I've got, a, I just moved house and I found like this framed drawing of me that I got in Glasgow actually. That was <laughs> I had a, <laughs> I have an Adam's apple in the drawing. <laughs> Maybe this drawing of me, where I look like a big thin guy uh, with a wasting disease. And then <laughs> there's these people, well, they're not going to hear this podcast, I don't think. There's these oh, people that have that. a, 
Well, no, because they're English and you know how they are. Yeah. They, they have a chicken named after me. Uh, they name all their chickens after female comedians. And they always, they gave me a framed picture of the chicken and they said, oh, Fern's a big, healthy girl and she steals food off all the other female chickens and it's mental. Yeah, that's a bit creepy. I've never had a present. I fucking feel jealous of someone. Nope, I've never had adult babies turn up at my gigs, so anything. What like about, that. I really wanted to ask you about Panto, because I imagine the world of Panto is like really dark. Uh, secretly, or can you talk about that? <laughs> or is there a lot at stake? <laughs> no, there's not a lot at stake, but it's like obviously doing the show is amazing and it's really rewarding and it's tough and it's good money and stuff. But yeah. it's just like the comedy circuit, like green, green room, uh, piss talk, and people talking about you. Uh, really? Every, Everybody's trying to shag each other. Everybody's a coke kid. <laughs> yeah, because the first inkling I had of it was this woman that used to be in Shameless was in the panel, and then this story came out about how she'd been taking millions of coke and um, pissing off out like all the kids and stuff, and it just sounded scandalous. And I was like, this is amazing. But, well, the, uh, yeah. the bold crankies, I mean, will I get sued for this, Andy? Are the crankies no doggers or something? They're mad swingers. I've Jimmy Cranky's a swinger. Fuck off. That's Supposedly. <laughs> oh my God. But not the women. <laughs> no, they're both of them are. Why That's do you think mental. I got into pan? Oh, I want to start shagging. <laughs> Fuck, can you not cut that out, Andy? I make it done. Actually, don't cut it out. Fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> Aye, but it's just as uh, intense as the comedy circuit. It's just as cutthroat. Is the Scottish comedy circuit still dead bitchy? Yeah. When you're yeah. walking out a green room and the door's not even shut yet and you can hear them calling you a cunt. Oh, my God. That's a shame. Ah, well. Is it a lot better down in England? Well, no, any small circuit, this is the mad thing, is like, or it's, it's kind of comforting because it, it makes you see everyone's the same. Every comedy circuit I've been to, because I've been to like 12 different countries or something now to do stand-up, and see when you go to a small comedy circuit, it's the same people over and over. Like, yeah. they'll always have, like, one guy who's big in that town and thinks he's, like, the biggest thing ever. Um, they all, they always have the same fallouts and stuff. Like, it's really funny to see. But London, when I did comedy in Manchester, that was more or less the same as other smaller circuits. Like, bit bitchy and people get jealous and stuff. But London, because it's so big, it's all right. I'd say. Yeah. It's just really impersonal um, and it took ages to make friends and stuff. Is this just because it's so big and there's probably so many gigs going on that there's enough for everybody? Oh no, it, was really, it took me about three years to really get into good gigs here, but it's more, I'd say because you'll be on lineups where like everyone's got TV credits or everyone's like really done a lot so they can't really be a dick about it mm -hmm. then there's a separate open spot circuit that's the thing is the open spot and the pro circuits are to totally separate yeah I, the open spot is circuits are kind of full of people that would probably troll you online saying that they want to buy your pants and stuff yeah it's mad to talking about this. I'm just really, I really couldn't give a shit about doing stand up now. Like, I don't miss it at all. Yeah. And you keep seeing people online being like, what I wouldn't give to be back performing. No, I've been wanting to have a break for ages, for like yeah. two years. Yeah, because you have been, I mean, we, I've known you for years. We go way back for years. And yeah, like 10, this is my 10th year, so you must be the same. Yeah, aye. And since I've known you, 
I mean, I've took a couple of bricks through pursuing acting or maybe other things. Or I mm. remember one time I just took a break because I couldn't be fucked. And you've never took a break. You've always gigged. Yeah, someone told me early on not to take breaks because it would be, and I kind of really took it to heart. But then mm-hmm. the last two years, I was really, the last two years was like the busiest I'd ever, ever been. And um, it's definitely good for your stand up because you just don't give a shit anymore. Like, I couldn't give a shit at what size a gig was. Do you know what? You know how you get that thing where people will be like, oh, I've just played to this many people? They don't yeah. care really just cared about like what money I was getting for things but I didn't feel any sense of excitement but then it kind of got bad because I was doing things that I should be excited about and I just was like depressed all the time and I kept thinking like I want to run away and just like get away from all my tour dates but um and and now I have got a break in the form of a global pandemic which is great and everyone yeah. has to stay off so no one can get ahead of you. Yeah. And we were talking there before it cut off, you were filming your special at the Orange yeah. War in Glasgow. And was this for Netflix? No, it's, well, basically, sometimes a company will pay for your special to be recorded. Then mm. they try and sell it to different people. So it could go to Netflix, it could go to Amazon. Could go, and then you go work your way down and down and down until it's like BBC Scotland's babe station. Like, <laughs> it, could, it just depends what happens. Well, fingers crossed um, it gets on something soon. Even if it was on the, during the lockdown, I'd imagine that you would get a lot of views. Uh, it'd be amazing. I've got a couple of friends whose lockdowns have been so well-timed with their sitcoms coming out because it just means yeah. everyone's watching them. Um, yeah. So you're not that far away from, you would never do a panto then? Uh, see, when I found out the money people get for a panto, I was like, that's amazing. Somebody told me once what like Jason Manford got to do <laughs> panto in Blackpool, and I think it was for like three nights or something. Anyway, I can't remember how much it was, but it was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's like, I was like that as well when I, when I started doing stand-up. I'm like, oh, I'm just a stand-up. I don't want to be anything else. But then they, they offer you the contract for six weeks' work and it's, you know, you get away from stand-up and for six weeks get a break from all the cunts, really. And you're just like, how much? Yes, please. I'll fucking yeah. dress up as an ugly sister for six weeks. <laughs> yeah, your material on that was really funny. I wish you did stand up more though, because that time I saw your show at the Glasgow Festival was amazing. Well, thank you very much. I remember when you came. Do you know it's it's a sad thing as well? Because see, before this happened, I I was on the verge of doing a tour. Um, yeah. I was going to come down to England more, and we were setting that up for gigs in England and London, and I was going to set up a resident kind of spot in the stand. So that was my New Year's resolution this year was to 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 do more stand up and it just kinda crashed to a halt. But fuck it, everybody's in the same boat, isn't they? So there's no point yeah. in complaining. No, that'd be amazing if you had your own night at the stand. Um yeah. have you done any of those virtual comedy nights they're running? Because they asked me to do it, but I think I'd just be the idea of doing stand up online makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> it's just sounds <laughs> terrible. Like I want to be like, can I just donate money or something, or do mm. something that's not this? Anyway. Yeah, I don't mean, I'm not. Don't put that in. <laughs> this doesn't get edited, by the way. So. Oh well. Well, okay, that's sorry. my true feeling. Is I would like to support them. I do not want to do stand up <laughs> online. This is the only thing I said yes about doing because. I've had loads of other, oh, do you want to have a chat on Instagram or perform in my sketch show? No, that sounds terrible. So I've got the exclusive. Yes. yes I was going to send you a vegan recipe yesterday because you always say about veganism. Yeah, batter away. You're looking, fin- you're looking great, by the way. 
Fuck off, Darren. Don't. I was going to say I, I came on this because I thought there was no video and I haven't worn makeup or done anything to my facial hair the whole lockdown. <laughs> You still look That's beautiful. why I'm trying. I'm trying to hide my face with my unbelievably large hands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like they're like Travis's hands in Tiger King. Mate, I've got a full blown mustache, so it's all right. Yeah, so I've, I've got. I'm looking more and more like I'm from Bathgate every day. It's horrible. <laughs> so how long have you been a vegan for? I'm not. I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. yeah. Um. You just for, go. I eat a lot of vegan foods, but um, it's I just can't get a milk that was won't go lumpy in my coffee. Yeah, that's pretty rancid, isn't it? When you put uh, almond milk or oat milk in your black coffee, it looks like shit. Yeah, it's because I we were going without eggs there for a bit because they were quite hard to get because of the lockdown and stuff, and I was like, I think I could do without eggs. Um, but yeah, it's just milk, getting good milk for coffee. But you know the Hug and Pine in Glasgow? Yes. They had this really nice recipe that I liked so much, I googled to, to find it and someone had put it up. It's, if you put in Hug and Pine tempeh, the only thing is, is fucking finding tempeh. It's like, have you had it there? It's like mad soya bean cake. Yeah. I've um, had it in restaurants, but I've been unable to buy it from shops. I is I was only, I used to go into Chinatown and get it here, and then mm. there's Chinese super. Oh, actually, you know tofu that the brand the tofu they've started making their own, so it will be in supermarkets more and more. But it's such yeah. a good recipe. Also, you should get Mira Soto's recipe book because that's I cook for that every day. It's just I'll loads check. of like. Asian vegan recipes. I'll check that out. Thank you very much. Have you been trying? You know how there's these government guidelines to get healthier and kind of remain fit and stuff. Have you been, you know, twenty minutes of sunlight a day and supposedly things like miso soup and all that kind of shit is like really good for you. Um, I usually have miso soup if I'm fasting, so I'll associate that with misery. Um. <laughs> I went running, I ran six kilometres yesterday, but that's why I'm fucked today. And I have to sleep. <laughs> um, but I've gained like 10, no, I've gained like nine pounds in the space of five weeks, which is quite a dedicated effort, which just proves vegan food makes you fat. <laughs> Any food makes you fat. <laughs> I've seen the picture of your... Uh, you p- p- posted a picture saying you were pregnant on Instagram. Aye, the number of guys that were like, I didn't know you were a mother, Mazel Tov, <laughs> messaging me. <laughs> and I was like, I said I'd give birth to my cat. But I just um, eating a lot of fibre that day. Fuck's sake, fam. And, but see, before we started recording this again, you said um, Andrew, who's doing the tech, you said he looked like, what was his name, Count? Count that- Dracula. No. <laughs> uh, not Dracula. Is Count- it Dankula? Dankula, yeah. Uh, Andy, do you want to pop up on the screen, mate, and show everybody what you look like? I don't know if it'll pop up, right, because I've got this green screen type thing. But- oh, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I last saw you ranting about freedom of speech right. on something. <laughs> you said I've had that a few times. <laughs> Were you saying that people buy your pints? I've had a pint through it, aye. <laughs> so I they think... Free pint. <laughs> For people thinking you're rac- racist. What, what was it he done? I can't even... What was it the guy actually done? Fairly, he did he do? He, he had, his girlfriend had a pet pug and he got it to do a um, Nazi salute, saying gas the Jews. Um, and then there was all this like fuss over it, and he sort of presented himself as a champion for free speech. But then he started being spotted on like EDL marches or uh, things like that, and he was he's kind of into the alt right. So he made out initially like a lot of comedians were on his side because he made out, oh, it's just to do with freedom of speech, and I was just saying this flippant thing. 
And then like people dug deeper and it was like, oh no, so he, he does, <laughs> he, he does believe in that. I'm trying to be careful what I'm saying in case the guy's litigious. Yeah. But he, he seems like a fanny. I, th- I think legally you can say that. Yeah. Plus he's got a bird. I'm fucking devastated. That cunt can get a bird and I can't get my hole. Fuck's sake. How can you not? So many women have low self-esteem. Also, when I came to see your live show, there were not, like tons of women coming up to you at the end. <laughs> I, I did all right. I was kidding on. I did all right. All I'm right. actually talking, like, girlfriend, though, I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> it'd be nice to get a girlfriend. Um, did you did you have one for a bit recently? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk about that, though. <laughs> all right, sorry. Um, I guess she's watching. I don't know. Well, I don't know why uh, you don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Have you still got your boyfriend? Yeah. Yeah, we've been going out for like eight. No, wait. Yeah, nearly eight years. The Irish but, guy? Yeah, lockdown is really... Um, sorry, he's working in the room above this because he's yeah. working from home now. So um, uh, lockdown has been really hard because um, normally I'm not at home very much. I'm only home for like two weeks in a month. I'm like a jet setting businessman and now we're just together every day. And I've seen people posting about, oh, it's been so great to spend time with this guy. I love being at home about, oh God, people just bragging about how happy their relationships are in quarantine. Yeah, and has that been, I mean, it's a surreal, strange experience. I'm back in my, my dad and my mum right now. I had a flat with my pal renting a room. I'm back in my mum and my dad and I want to fucking kill them, man. It's just so depressing. Oh You're in God. each other's company like 24 hours a day. Are they quite annoying anyway? Aye, I'm leaving them alive. They're not going to watch us anyway, so fuck it. Oh, I, I hate them. <laughs> Getting on. No, but you know what? You know what it's like if you live with somebody twenty four hours a day. It's, it doesn't even matter who you're living with. It can just get too much. To be honest, I was thinking. I'd been thinking that a lot. I was thinking I can't imagine how anyone could get on with anyone for this long. Um, because we do it. We just do it by. We'll generally have like maybe our meals together. But other mm-hmm. than that, we'll be at, like, different ends of the house. Um, <laughs> is, is that on purpose? Yeah, yeah, because I, I work from downstairs and he works in the spare room. Um, but we used to, when we first moved to London, we lived in a studio. Well, that's a fancy word for one room. And I was like, I can't. If, if we were still there, it would be brutal. So I'm really lucky. Um, and I went, f- no fucking way would I live with my parents again. At one point I fell out with my boyfriend and I was going to go to my dad's because my dad lives in England. But I was like, that's that's even worse. Like, he's just annoying in a different way. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's crazy. This is going to make or break a lot of people. Um, it's absolutely fucked. If your boyfriend gets a coronavirus, would you go out with me? Um, I don't know because I'm very sus- but, well. I'll, I'll, I just thought, think how you hurt Darren before with the Kirsty Alley comment, <laughs> and then I don't. Well, see, from going out with when I was younger and I would go out with people, I used to always think the problem lay with them because I was like amazing, and now I'm in my thirties, I think. How did I get anyone to go out with me? Because you kind of see more and more what a bad person you are <laughs> when you go out with someone else for so long. So I think after this, I can't imagine. Oh, I just, I hate the thought of trying to go out with someone again. It's just, oh. Yeah. No, I, I, I think I'd go out with someone like a TV commissioner, something practical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for anyone that I need to explain the Kirsty Alley um, comment obviously I'm always on social media so people have seen me my weight fluctuate I can go from pretty pretty normal sized to maybe you know 
25 stone or something. <laughs> and uh, one of my... <laughs> <laughs> in one of my heaviest moments, because I seen you one stint after, and I was doing like boxing training and stuff, and I was looking really good. And then, like seven months later or something, I walked into a green room. And do you want to finish the rest of the story? No, you say because I'd forgotten. Right. Okay. So obviously, I was fat as fuck, and <laughs> you were just like looking at me, puzzled <laughs> and confused. You also kind of <laughs> looked worried and a wee bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking at me like no, I was sick no, no. and you were just like your weight your weight loss and your weight gain reminds me of Kirsty Alley and I was like oh thank you very much yeah that's fucked because I've I've been adding up all the bad things I've said to people over the years because loads of times I get told I've said something offensive and I don't know what but I think I've got Asperger's as the thing which would explain a lot. And a lot of people from my area, Susan Boyle and all that, are that way. So genuinely, it means you say, like, really bad, blunt things and don't realise it's a problem. Maybe I'm just a cunt, but I have been told about stuff I've said before, and it's like... Because that's also why I don't like drinking, because so much of my interactions are like an embarrassing conversation anyway. So yeah. I said that to you, and then I wanted to interview you for my podcast where I go back over all the bad things I've said to people. I never took it as an insult. I found it funny. Plus, you, Cliff Hart. Uh, no, well, but I saw you last summer at the Fringe, and you said, do you remember saying that? And then you said, that was me at my lowest point mentally and, like, my heaviest weight or something. I mean, I was, I mean... Yeah, I kind of wanted to kill myself after it, but that's why I love you as well. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. Oh, my God. <coughs> that's okay. So you says a lot of people from your area has Asperger's. Do you think there's something in the water? I think it's, when... uh, it's just inbreed. Uh, well, it's just people not leaving the area. Um, honestly, there's a lot of people where I'm from I like that. Uh, and then I didn't realise the way I was was like sort of an issue and then when I moved to England middle class English people are very passive aggressive in how they communicate anyway whereas I think in Scotland a certain degree of mentalness is tolerated yeah uh, but <clears throat> aye, there's been loads of things I've said to people that have been quite bad like that um like one time, I remember somebody kept bringing up what, this and I didn't see why it was a problem. This squaddy was chatting me up in a bar and I said, how many people have you killed? And everyone was like, oh, you can't even say that. But I just <laughs> thought I was making chit-chat about his job. Yeah. And did he answer? No, he gave some answer. Of, oh, I might have fired a weapon and mm. uh, the... The weapon might have neutralised some target. So it was all euphemisms so he can pretend that he doesn't go and shoot uh, Iraqis or Afghanistan. <laughs> or something. Hi. Did they start crying and say, I don't want to talk about it? Fuck, I can't believe we're slagging British soldiers on this, my, my podcast film. Oh, sorry, have you got those types of fans? Because I hate soldiers. I <laughs> fuck the British Army. Come on, let's do it. Um, what? Uh, I anyway. Oh, I feel bad now about saying that about your weight. It wasn't intended to be, be malicious as the thing. It's terrible. I did not take it as an insult. Maybe that's just because I'm a cuck. And I my main, it. maybe my main memory of you is you went on a night out with my youngest brother, uh, and he said how amazing it was. <laughs> Yes, um, you were gigging That was at the when stand. you were an alky. Yeah, I was an alky. But my brother fat, said, like, oh, Darren's such a great guy. And, oh, my brother's an alky as well. <laughs> he, well, he said that he has just, like, in the last year. Oh, no. I love how you laughed after that there. I like a loving sister. <laughs> he lives in China now. Um, <laughs> For fuck's sake. I, I remember that. I'd, it was one of those ones 
see it as the years go on, you're like, did that actually happen? Then I was wondering if he actually had a brother, but Fern was gigging in Glasgow one night, <laughs> and uh, we, uh, me and my brother went out and get absolutely fucked in the town, man. I can't even remember what happened, but yeah. I don't drink anymore. Remember we gigged together at the So You Think You're Funny final as well? Well, that's where I met you, so yeah. Was that the first time you met? Um, almost definitely, unless I'd maybe sort of been on the same lineup in the stand, but yeah. uh, I'm sure that was the first I met you. I yeah, missed, that was a good competition. I missed Fern came in third and... I missed the press release that day because I was out my tits and whiskey, so I just pretended I was sick though. So Oh it was, no. It was ten well, years ago, so we all had to do a really terrible thing. We all had to go and do stand up on the radio with Fred McCauley oh. and Susan Calman. And um at the time doing stand up on the radio seemed like this huge such a huge thing. Um and I just bombed. Uh, I think we were only allowed on for 90 seconds. Anyway, that was a boring story. It didn't go anywhere. Most, did you know, Daddy, most people from our year have quit that year. Really? Do you remember who else was in? Was there any, like, well-known yeah. names? Uh, the guy that won, he quit and went back to live with his parents in Wales. But also he works in film. He might have come back to London, but he quit comedy. The girl that I was joint runner-up with is now married to John Richardson and oh. had a baby with him. And she's kind of making a comeback now, but she's more sort of like a comedy actress. Um, who else? Oh, the, the other girl in it, Nicola, she was like in the Jehovah's Witnesses and ended up like having this mad cult experience and they stopped her from doing stand-up uh, from the girl from Newcastle yeah yeah I never knew that That's yeah crazy. like her husband was a Jehovah's Witness and she was one and her whole family was one because uh, I didn't see her for years and then I saw her at a festival two years ago and all this came out because I couldn't work out why she just disappeared. It's mad. Fuck, oh, man. Uh, I was nearly, I mean, it's nowhere near as intense as that, but I nearly became a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, really? Yeah, a couple of years ago. It must have been about, honestly, it must have been about just before I started stand-up comedy. Um, I was oh. fucked with depression and stuff, and obviously an alcoholic, and I was just, like, lost. And I worked in a place and everyone was a Jehovah's Witness. And to be fair to them, they were all nice and lovely, but obviously yeah. part of that religion is they try to recruit you. And it was just like, they were like, come in with us and you can, we'll help you get a flat, we'll get you a car, you'll, you know, if you get a girlfriend, she'll be a Jehovah's Witness and you can get married. <laughs> and I'm like, car, girlfriend, I'm no an alky, sign me up. And I was so close to becoming a, a Jehovah before my pal, my pal stepped in and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? But I remember like reading the Watchtower and stuff and thinking, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm into that, I'm into that. But it just goes to show you, see, when your head's not in a, a good place, I probably would have joined, I would have went anywhere when I was fucked. Yeah, um, I nearly signed up to be a recruitment consultant when comedy wasn't going well once, so that's... Similar. Um, my boyfriend was raised as a Jehovah's Witness, which is, who doesn't hear me saying that, which is really weird for an Irish person because they're all so Catholic. But his yeah. mum just came home one day and was like, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. And everyone was like, okay. And then, because um, I kind of, I forget, it will sometimes be like, like I only just found out the other day that he used to go and do the door knocking and he wasn't allowed in school assemblies and stuff. Or, wow. Um, but his mum's really, she'd never mentioned it to me, and she sort of cheats at doing Christmas because she's dead nice. Yeah. I, it's, it's just like any other religion, though, isn't it? I mean, fuck it, man. They're all the same. They're all mental. Would you ever be a Scientologist? Have you ever had a run-in with them? 
No, I was brought up a really strict Catholic, so I don't want to be any other kind of religion ever. But I did have a friend that fucking joined Scientology. And again, it didn't come up for ages. And then um, it was one of my stripper friends in Edinburgh. She was quite weird, but really nice. And we were sitting, I was obsessed with Scientology for ages, just reading about how mad they were. Around the time Anonymous came out, and we were sitting near a, a coffee shop near the Scientology base in Edinburgh. And I was telling her all these facts about Scientology. And she went, yeah, I was, I used to go in there for a bit. And I was like, what? Then it just gradually was like, oh, and I paid for some courses and assertiveness. And I did this and that. And she paid the money for a man to come and shout, yes, 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 into her face. <laughs> and then... Um, then she ran out of money for the courses because she was just a student. And then she started getting on. Hello, Fern. That's us recording again. It's like the universe doesn't want us to be together. Sorry, all I heard was be together because my mic wasn't working for the start of that. Can you figure out what I was trying to say? Uh, you want us to be together. <laughs> yeah, I was saying that and on it's down, it's like the universe doesn't want us to be together. Oh, can my face not be in this? Your face is beautiful. Don't. No. Oh, uh, I don't want to do this. I, I'm meant to make a sketch about my cat by today. Uh -huh. And I don't want to do it. And it just feels, oh, I was having such a nice time not doing anything. I'm sorry that I can I make you feel this way. No, it's not you. I would rather do this. Well, see, because the internet keeps fucking breaking, I think we'll do another five or ten minutes and then just wrap it up. <laughs> Was that? Well, I talk about fasting. If you want. It's better than talking about that. Jehovah's fucking witnesses and Scientologists, isn't it? I think we'll get stabbed. Um, the Scientologists do go after people. My student newspaper did a story on them and uh, they, they did come after us and we got hate mail for America. If they come after me, I'll punch fuck at them. All right. But, um, <laughs> so you've been doing fasting. You look, you look really good. Thank you very much, Fern. I've been doing uh, intermittent fasting. Um, I, a lot of comedians do that. Yes, um, but we've all, we've always done fasting, haven't we? We've been speaking about this for a long time. Well, I've always liked the idea that I do it, but the time I did it, the best. Yeah. Any time I've been really, really skint, actually, I was good at it. Um, but what I I really believe in it and believe how good it is for people, but it's mad because there's so much resistance to it. Mm -hmm. Um. Meanwhile, there's like an obesity, massive obesity problem, and people try and find. Well, there's all these like diet foods, but obviously, buying more food doesn't gonna solve the problem of getting fat. Um, like I get annoyed at diet foods being resold to people as healthy, like yeah. those little vegan bars that are just made of squashed up dates and raisins, are just sugar. You'd be as well just eating normal sweets. Yeah. Uh, it's a harsh reality. Uh, with the coronavirus as well, what scared me was uh, overweight people and people classed as obese can be affected by this. And even yeah. though I feel healthy and stuff, I'm still in the, the overweight category. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to put on weight during the lockdown because I'm that type of person. I'd just put on a stone in two weeks. So I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to do... I'm going to do fasting because I've it's so good for your mental health, your skin. That documentary you told me about the other night is fantastic. Well, that was the it's the uh, Michael Mosley one that got loads of people into five too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you do need to have other you need to have other motivations beyond just be losing weight for even though well I I only ever do fasting because I want to lose weight. But I had to read about all the other reasons for it to keep my motivation up. Because any time I fast, I, I do feel better and stuff, but my brain's just like, food, 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 food. <laughs> just yeah. think about food. 
are you doing intermittent fasting or? No, I try and go for like 24 hours or, but I want to do a three day fast because I actually read the easiest way to get into fasting regularly is to do a three day one, which sounds counterintuitive because it's longer than doing a day. That's the 72 hours, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. But before the lockdown as well, it was like the fittest I'd ever been in my life because I was weightlifting mm. a lot um, and going to the gym. I went to the gym on like my entire tour really late at night. Then my special come out and I, was, I fucking just, I still looked fat in that. So I was like, oh. Um, you weren't fat though. You're just a stand-up comedian. We're all fucked with insecurity and all that well, type I'm of shit. I'm not Scottish fat, but I'm um, fat down here. <laughs> <laughs> I, My fan go base home, is going to love us. <laughs> when I go home, I always feel like so thin. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> But, I, I I tried that 72 hour fast last week and I only managed four, 44 hours I managed. That's better than me because I said I was going to do it and I got to like 22 hours <laughs> and then I bought like a fucking massive loaf of bread and just ate it on the way back for the shop. <laughs> <laughs> a full loaf of bread. No, honestly, I wish... I could, the only t- I've always found it quite difficult to understand alcoholism because my grand always won and I'm quite like, my boyfriend's always saying I'm dead on sympathetic to alcohol- alcoholics. And then my friend was explaining to me how he couldn't stop drinking. And I realised that about, that's how I feel about bread. Like, if I could quit bread, I could be thin. My career could be so much better. <laughs> and I just can't, even though I know it gets in my way, I just, I can't do it. I love yeah. it above all else. Any type of bread as well. Especially when you're fasting and you break a fast, it's better than cocaine when you eat white bread. It actually is. Yeah, it's mental, the feeling of, um, you do feel, and then whenever you break your fast, you're like, I'm always like, oh, that was, that was all right, but I wish I'd gone for longer and now I need to start from scratch. Yeah, that's what happened with that 44 hour one. I had tofu, fish, and chips with uh, mushy peas, and I was like halfway through it and I was like, ah, oh, I wish I went longer, but fuck it. I, I, um, I got really into calorie counting and that made such a difference to my weight loss because I used to think I had like a bad metabolism and stuff. But then I would do other things where I was thinking this the other day. I went for lunch with a really like skinny comedian eh, for breakfast rather at the fringe. And I thought, why is she only having one breakfast? Because I was having two breakfasts. <laughs> and I thought, that's a bit weird <laughs> that she yeah. would only have one. So I did a lot of like fat cunt things like that that I just thought were normal. I think the difference though is like, you just focus on eating high, highly nutritious food. If you want to do a wee bit of fasting, do that. Drink a lot of water. Obviously, keep up your running. I mean, who the fuck am I to talk about? The next time you see me, I'll probably be 30 stone, but I will. Just try Well, that kind of thing... See, I think I'm the same as you in terms of, like, uh, eating for... for like, I wish I was one of those... <laughs> well, I, I wish I was one of those people that was, like... Um, Oh, food is just fuel, and I could just see it that way. But I'm a dead good cook, and I wish I could remove that skill. And I'm really interested in food, and I eat too much. And I think my boyfriend's a chubby chaser as well, because he doesn't care that much when I get fat. Well, I think the thing is with me, I've not had it in a couple of years, but when I get depression, I eat food, and that's why I get so like up and down in weight. Yeah. But I've been okay for the last couple of years and I'm all right now, but everybody just calls you a fat bastard and you're like, there's more to it than that. I mean, obviously I was a fat bastard, but... If you're a girl, no one would ever do that. Yeah. I've noticed some differences between men and girls, though, with weight. Yeah. Um, like, I've noticed that people will comment on what women eat more. They won't yeah. say that they're fat, though. 
Absolutely. I've done uh, material on that. It's a massive thing. People commenting on your, what you're eating. Because um, I've got a mate, he directs my Edinburgh shows, actually. And when I first met him, when I started doing stand-up, I didn't really have, like, hang-ups about food as much as I do now. And I was eating a big bit of chocolate cake. And he went, fucking hell for it. Because I was, like, eating it happily and not, I don't know, because I was, like, dead enthusiastic. And now I'm, like, obsessed with weight loss and I count calories every day. And he'll be like, you don't need to lose any more weight. And I'm like, are you happy now? Are you fucking happy that you criticised me for that? But it's not just him. It's, like, women police what other women are eating as well, and it's fucked. And I think if you're a woman, there's the social consequences are be, being fat are much higher. Like if you look at the state of James Corden, but he's got, um, maybe I shouldn't say that. The I state, <laughs> I saying the state of him is not that nice. Well, I think I might want to do is he's got a show in America and I'm like, throw your principles out the window. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you, I mean, the number of like, guys on TV that look like sea monsters and then even female newsreaders are tiny. I can't disagree with you there, pal. I totally have uh, females. That's because you're a cuck. <laughs> I'm a cuck. Can I come down to London and sleep on your carpet? Well, I was going to say, uh, if you want to stay in my spare room, if you're doing gigs, come down. I'll take you up on that. Thank you very much, because um, well, I'm well, deaf. Uh, yeah, honestly, because I keep... Sorry, go on. No, I was just saying, I just definitely want to start being a stand-up comedian again. I, I keep saying it to people. I only got the house in January, and now I'm, like, obsessed with telling different stand-ups to come and stay with me. But um, I never know if people think I'm just saying it casually, so I say it again and again. I'll definitely come down, pal. We can go for some vegan food. I'm really oh, scared I that this might... That. Is there? I would. Well, although Glasgow's unbelievably vegan. You were saying about the tall fish and chips. Is that yeah. for that vegan chippy? No, I got it from Marks and Spencer's, but I know the vegan chippy okay, you're yeah. talking about. Um, it's fantastic. I mean, if anybody can go vegan... If I can go vegan, anybody can, man. Fuck it. Because I was like well, James it's so, Corden. Uh, it's so easy in Glasgow, I feel. Um... I'll tell you where's good as well. There's a cafe on Socky Hall Street called Willow Grove Cafe. It's not fully vegan, but it does millions in vegan breakfasts. I'll go there loads. Um, and then another one called Maze, just down the road for there. That's nice. I'll need to check it out. Um, I tell you what, see if you want to go on a big fast again. Let me know, and I'll start with you, and we'll do it together. We'll do it, and what do we do to stick to it? Because this is, this is how I tried to stick to it this time. Anytime I wanted to eat, I just emailed myself, I want to eat right now, to show how frequently I got <laughs> the thought and how much it wasn't linked with appetite. I can't believe I'm telling you this. Yeah, I think you've got an eating disorder. I can only say that because I've got one as well. I wish. I actually wish. <laughs> like... Yeah. No, I do think about it a lot, though. Aye, I, we can fast together and then you can call me a fat sea monster. I've got no problem with that. No, that would be great. Um, I just was trying to think how to raise the... how to make it so that we don't break the fast. Because I Black just coffee. broke it. No, I mean, if you're doing it at the same time, I just broke it because I was like, oh, Darren wouldn't have kept this up. Then I felt really guilty thinking of you doing it for days while I was just eating bread in a car park. <laughs> I completely... I'm, I think I'm dyslexic, so I completely misread your message. I thought you were starting to write. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about? No. Well, I will... Right, look, I will start tonight because I've had a lot to eat again today. <laughs> right, OK. So is there anything else that you would like to say? Is there anything that... Um, obviously this has been a wee bit stuttered because virgins crashed across uh, the UK but have you got anything online that you would like people to check out? 
I've got a pod. I just recorded a podcast pilot with the BBC with my mate Alison, where we just talk about different crises we've gone through and how we were mental cases and handled them badly. But that isn't out yet. But if you follow me on social media, I'll put a link up to it when it comes out. Brilliant. You'll get. You'll be getting a lot of mad Glaswegians following you now. I hope so. That's like the best audience. Yeah. And uh, what else are we going to say? I think that's it. I appreciate your time. I would talk longer, but it's probably going to cut out again, to be honest. No, that's all right. I'm going to get in trouble for not doing this work I was meant to do anyway. But it's been nice to uh, socialise, to be honest. <laughs> it's been good to catch up, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I only seem to see you briefly. I was going to say another time you spoke to me like weird circumstances, but I'll, I'll send you a message about that. How's it really? Oh, it... I'll tell you later. So you were to me like a fat piece of shit or something? No, 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 no. Notice how I lit up there? I was like, go call me a fat piece of shit. I, that was mad. <sighs> Do you know this dominatrix that everyone in Glasgow knows in comedy? I'm sure I saw you follow her, uh, Megara. Yeah. I, sh- I interviewed her for my podcast that ne- I was still never brought out. And then I saw you followed her and I was like, oh, I bet he goes to her dungeon and stuff. <laughs> everybody, everybody thinks I'm going to be a fucking pervert. Nah. I'm too self... See, I would... This is how much I struggle with my confidence and my weight firm. See, if I wasn't so self-conscious about taking my socks off and my top off, I would go to a <laughs> dominatrix, <laughs> dom- no bother. <laughs> if you could just get a six pack, you'd go to a dominatrix. Yeah, I'd be like, can I keep my top on, please? <laughs> That's amazing. Fuck, my mum's sitting downstairs. She's going to hear me say that. Oh, no. Kidding or not. Ian, what your parents would bring up a lot of, you'd go back to the kind of eating you would do when you lived with them. Mm, really bad, I. I was a fucking kebab fiend when I lived here. Oh no. But I'm alright um, now. Uh, my phone's about to die, by the way. That's okay. Well, so check out Fern's podcast, follow her on Twitter. Give me a shout tomorrow. We can start this fast again. And oh, I yeah. Just, and if your boyfriend dies of the coronavirus, uh, we can get married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, obviously. Please don't fucking cancel me. But, Fern, have a good night. I'll talk to you soon, right? <laughs> right. Speak to you later. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.